Good morning, everyone. Today is November 26, 2018. Uh, a few days ago, I made a video. Tried to make a quick one for you so that you don't waste a lot of time. And uh, what I wanted to show you was that this uh, somebody, when they were trying to clean and fix this clock, used a uh, punch and they peened holes all the way around this side of the bushing where the shaft goes through. This would be the shaft right here. And uh, in the result of that, they, they think they're doing themselves a big favor and saving a lot of time, I think. Uh, it doesn't work very well. It flattens the shaft, has the shaft drills around that because this becomes a, a, a bump inside of the this housing. You can't see it, but it does do that. So when you do have a failure, the clock quits, you're, you end up having to reround this hole a little bit so you know where your center is going to be. And then you got to take the, the shaft and repolish it and take enough off of it so that it's round again. And uh, then, of course, leave it highly polished at the end. Uh, I'm going to go ahead on this uh, clock build and uh, show you what I, what I did. Uh, you, uh, first of all, you have to round that hole back out a little bit which uh, I did. This is a rounding punch or a center. This is actually my zero points. This is where I find the zero on the on the pivot hole. And uh, then I tapped that around gently so I could get that back to round. And then I locked it in the uh, locking position so that you could uh, these here deal fellas here these are clampings. This is a bushing tool. Now this bushing tool is uh, homemade. Uh, my dad made it, oh, must have been 30 years ago. He was a machinist for Hornaday Day Bullet Manufacturing. Uh, he was a foreman out there and he uh, did a lot of tool design and stuff and he was a master machinist, if, uh, if there is a name such as that, but he was a master at it, believe me. Incredibly uh, sharp. Uh, in fact, these are the, uh, this one here is the uh, cutter that I'm going to be using to uh, re recut that bushing hole and put a new bushing inside of that. And all these cutters that he has, and there's maybe 10 of them, they were all, all made by him and uh, these were not bought. So I've had these for years and they've been cutting for, I don't know, hundreds of, hundreds of bushings. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. I think maybe he bought this, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, bushing frame here. I think this might have been a tapping block. But the rest of it, the clamps and the, the, uh, the position uh, base on it and everything else was, was, was actually made by my dad. So, you know, I don't ever want to get rid of it until I pass away. Then the kids can do what they want with it. So, with that, well, let's look, get back to the clock. Uh, so, first of all, you measure that, and that, that, this shaft right here, this shaft is uh, 2.5 millimeters, so you're going to use a, a thousandths over. So I'm using a, uh, I'm going to use a uh, 2.4 or 2.6 uh, bushing, and it'll compress when I push it down through the, through this uh, bushing hole once I get it rounded. So it'll probably be just a bit too tight and we'll have to ream it out a little bit. And then I use a special tool that I made and uh, I uh, burnish the inside of the uh, bushing so that it doesn't ever, uh, it's what uh, actually hardens it and it, it makes it shiny so we have a good running uh, gear inside of there, or a shaft. So with that I'll show you. Uh, <coughs> Now, the reason I actually made this little video here is because I wanted uh, to let beginners see what kind of things are, are out there. And a lot of cock makers have done that, you know, try to round a hole, but it doesn't work. And if you want to learn this to, and do it right, make sure you don't uh, do that. So we're going to actually cut this uh, hole if I can hold it straight enough here for you. Alright, I'll 
clear through. Alrighty. Now the next thing, which I don't know, uh, I always do this. I want to de-ream that hole just a little bit, take the burr out of it. So, these uh, little tools actually help you put a new oil cup back in it if you don't have a, a bushing that has an oil cup. But I like to get that uh, burr off of the, the top of it. So, while well, that hole is done, so the next thing we want to do is go find the back side here if we can. All right. All right. I'm not going to be able to do it that way. So let's see if we can zoom out a little bit further here. Nice way to do this. Okay, I like to drive these in from the back side. So when it goes when it goes down on the plate, it it. Uh, is exactly flat against that and uh, I'm just going to touch that, take that burr off of there. Okay, the next thing I want to do okay. wasn't quite set up. I like to be set up so that we don't waste a lot of time. Alrighty, now this is uh, Loctite. I don't know whether everybody does it. I do. Uh, I know the bushing fits tight when it comes in. Alright. and flat and we are in. Let me look real close. Yep. Okay. We're in. So the next thing I do is turn it around real quick. Yep. And we're gonna take all that Loctite and get it uh, get it out of the area. I don't like that it dries pretty clear a reddish clear. I have it it just dries up and you can't see it but that does that. Okay, so that shows you how, how that's done. And uh, like I said, this is kind of a unique tool. It's all been made by my dad. So uh, you can see here that I can't take those holes where they peen these holes in here. But uh, I can't, I can't cut those out of there. But at least, uh, at least when the new shaft goes in there and we'll fit that next, we'll uh, have a nice round hole and we'll have it be polished and the clock will certainly run better. So, thanks for watching this video. This is going to be a little bit of a continuation. Uh, two things happened. One, I put a new bushing in here and I put a 2.6 millimeter bushing in here. And the shaft actually measures 2.48. Uh, usually these compress enough that you can't quite get the shaft back in there, your gear shaft. And then you have to ream these out a little bit and polish them up. But that wasn't the case here. Uh, that slipped right through there. It was uh, just a little bit loose and I didn't like that. Uh, the, the, the rule of thumb is, is that it can have inside shake one half the distance of your pivot. So this would be the, the pivot back here. And I had less than that, but you know what? I don't like them when they shake that much, and I had too much, too much play in it. So I put a uh, 2.5 millimeter bushing in there off camera, and uh, 
that worked a lot better because now it's too tight. So there's two things I'll do. One, uh, I'm going to take the, the shaft and uh, let me get this out of the way. I'm going to take the uh, shaft and polish it and get, get all the, uh, this is where the, uh, the uh, chime gear drive fastens and it's all score, scored up here. So I'm going to clean that up just a little bit. I don't want to take too much of that off. And then I'm going to take back here, I'm going to polish this to get that flat out of it. And uh, then we'll uh, polish the other side and then this gear is done. And that hole will work just perfect. So I thought maybe I'd show you how, to, how I did that. Now I use a, a small machinist lathe, this is a 10 inch lathe. And uh, I bought this quite a, quite a number of years ago. Rebuilt the head and the tailstock, but it's still pretty noisy. So you just have to bear with the noise uh, when I start it up. But uh, and I'll show you how I polish those up. I hope that's going to stay in focus. Now, you can't put a lot of pressure on this. You notice the uh, my gear is up against the chuck so that I have a little more base, a little more support here. Uh, and if I was using a little watchmaker's lathe, I'd support the T out here with a T, uh, T uh, rest or a center rest and then uh, polish the inside. But this will work just fine. So we'll start it. And it's fairly true. So the first thing I want to do is this is a, I make these up. This is, I don't know, probably a 400 grit or a 500 grit. And I'm just going to come in here. thing I'm going to do is I'm going to polish gear where the uh, bushing hole goes through. I'm just putting some light pressure on there. You don't have to get wild with it. It's just a little bit. And I can see the, uh, the marks in the, the uh, grid that uh, made a marred that shaft. They're almost gone. And this is probably, uh, I think these are a thousand grit. Keep this moving if you have a small leg. You can do this on a drill press. You just got to be really careful to make sure your drill, drill press is not so cheap that it wobbles around a lot. Uh, I've seen say a few of those, but uh, this will work just fine if you've got a drill press or a flex shaft or a modem or you know anything that will spin it at a high RPM. Okay. That looks pretty good, so we'll call that finished on that side. Then we'll turn it around, and here we got to be just a little bit more careful because this is probably not going to be as, as true. These shafts aren't that very that true. They, I tell you, this is all soft metal, so you just have to be terribly careful. Same thing, we'll just go ahead and clean it up, see how we, see how it's taking those marks out of there. And I'm not going to take them all out. Now we're getting a lot of shake here, but that's not going to cause a problem. Alrighty, now I'm going to get in here and I'm just going to go ahead and Uh, shaft when I'm doing this. And we'll clean it out here. And we'll call that good. That's done. So, 
Only about 20 more gears to go. Uh, as always, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll uh, continue this uh, build here as I get time. So thanks again.